welcome back. I'm Andreas Chat, your tech curious web designer. In this video, we will take a look how we can deploy a tenants application. The services I will be using for this are Railway as my web server, AWS S3 bucket as my media file storage, and Porkpan as my domain registrar. However, feel free to use your own preferred services, as the setup should be quite similar across different environments. But before we get started, a quick shout out to my new supporters on Patreon. A high five to Eddie and a fist bump to Sapsa Binks. Thank you so much for your support, I really appreciate it. Okay, and now without further ado, let's dive in. We finalized our application in the last video, where we added two tenants, a coffee shop tenant with the subdomain coffeeshop.localhost and also a car dealer tenant. Okay, let's deploy this application now to our web server. I will go through the deployment steps rather quickly, so if you want more explanation, check out my deployment tutorials. You find the link in the description below. First, I install G Unicorn. This is my run server in production. Then I install environ to set up my environment variables. Now let's set it up. I go to my settings.py file. These lines initialize the env class and read from the env file. And we also define a variable for the environment. Next we create the env file. I go to my core folder and create a new file .env. And here I set the environment to development. On the web server this variable will be set to production. Now we set the debug mode depending on the environment. With this debug is disabled in production. Next we set up the secret key. For this I generate a new secret key. I open up the Python shell. With Python manage the Py shell. Then I am importing the get random secret key function, call this function and print the value. And this is my new secret key. I paste it in here, save this file and exit the shell. Alright, and then I add the secret key variable to the settings. Next we look at the static files, for this I install white noise. We add the white noise middleware. Add the static root. And save the file. And then we run the collect static command. This creates now the static files folder with all the files we need in production. Next, let's set up the production database. So in development I'm using the Postgres container else let's make a copy And then here I add the credentials now for the remote database. And we will again use the tenants engine. I add here now my environment variables. And add the values to the env file. Okay, and now we need to set up a Postgres database on our web server. The web server I will be choosing is Railway, simply because I'm already on a hobby plan there, but feel free to choose the web server of your choice. I'm starting a new project and first I will create a Postgres database. 
OK. And then I'm going to the variable step here and grab the values I need for my project. So first we need the BG database value and paste it in the env file. And the same I do also with the other values. All right. However, the last two values are only for the internal connection when the app runs on railway. But I still need to migrate the tables, and for this I need a public connection. And the database public URL can give me those values. So let's grab this URL and have a look at this string. And here we have the public host, so I copy this string. and add it to my PG host and also the public port number. All right, let's get rid of the URL and now we can connect to the remote database externally. Let's save this file and let's migrate our tables. So for this I switch first to the production environment. So I'm going to my settings to py file and just set my environment variable to production. Okay, save this file. And now with Python managed to py migrate, I created tables in the remote database. And as we can see here, it is adding the tables to the public schema. Okay, once this is done, let's create a super user. OK, and now we can deploy our application. I will skip the setup for Tailwind CSS and email in this tutorial, but you can find guides for those in my deployment series. Before we ship any code, let's collect all the packages we are using to the requirements.txt file with the pip freeze command. And then we are ready to push the code to GitHub. We got already a git ignore file in this project with folders and files we don't need in production. And I could also add here the docker compose file, as I'm using this only to set up the local Postgres container. OK, save this file. And now I'm connecting to GitHub using GitHub Desktop. I connected GitHub Desktop to my project folder, and we can publish now the repository. And I'm calling this repo Django-Tenants. And now we can connect our web server with this repository. We can also change the name of this project. Let's do that quickly. I call it Django-Tenants. And now I create a new service using the GitHub repository. Then first I add the environment variables. So I'm click the variables tab and go here to raw editor and paste them in here. Here I change the environment to production. and change the host and port values to the internal values. All right, and then update variables. And then in settings, I add the custom start command, which is using gunicorn and points to the location of the whiskey file in the core folder. OK, and then we deploy the application. Once this is done, we can generate a domain. As port I'm using 8080. This is the port for gunicorn. And generate domain. And this is our domain on railway. Let's copy it. 
and add it to the allowed host in our application. So here we have the allowed host setting. So instead of allowing everyone, this is this wildcard symbol here, I add the domain from the web server. And I add it also to the CSRF trusted origins. Okay, save this file. And now let's redeploy the app. Okay, once this is deployed, we can check it out. And great, the website is up and running. Let's add some items. And let's log in with the admin user. All right, this is great so far. But to upload an avatar image, we need to set up an online media storage first. Because if we would try to upload an avatar now, this would not work. As we can see, we have a broken link here. And the media file storage I will be using in this tutorial is Amazon's S3 bucket, which is one of the most popular solutions for storing media files. Okay, first I set up the AWS S3 configuration in my Django application. For this I have to install two packages. So we need to install Django storages. And also Porto3, which is a SDK to communicate with the S3 packet. And then we add those packages straight to our requirements.txt file. Alright, next let's set up some environment variables for the AWS credentials. And for the connection we need the storage bucket name, the access key ID and the secret access key. Okay, let's head over to AWS now. Create an account and sign in. So in the search bar here, I can look for S3 and click on this link. Then create packet. I add here packet name. I call it tenants media files. Then I unclick here block all public access. So I want to grant this packet public access. Then I also click the I acknowledge box here. And then I create the packet. Next we add a packet policy. So I click on the packet. Here to permissions. Here we have the packet policy. I click edit. And here I click on policy generator. I select here S3 packet policy. Under principle, I add the asterisk, allowing everyone to access this packet. Under actions, I select get object. Then here we need to add the packet's ARN name, which we can get from the previous page. Copy this string here. And at the end of the string, I add a slash and an asterisk. And then I click Add Statement. And generate policy. This is my policy code. I copy it. And paste it in here. All right. And then save changes. OK, with that, our packet is set up. So let's copy the name and add it to our env file. All right, next we create the access keys. For this I have to create an IAM user. I click on this link. Then here I click on users and create a new user. Give it a username. 
Then I click here, provide user access to AWS Management Console. Then I click, I want to create an IAM user. Then I create a custom password. Then unclick user must create a new password at the next sign in. And then click next. Here I attach policies directly. Then here I'm searching for Amazon S3 full access. Click this policy here and then next. And then create user. All right, let's click the link return the user list. Then I click on the user. And on this page, we can create now the access key. So I click this link. Here I select local code. Then I click to confirm. And then create access key. And here we have the two keys we need. So I grab the access key. And add the value in here. And the secret access key. OK. Let's add those environment variables also to our application on the web server. So here in variables, I add them also in here. And then update variables and deploy. Next, we connect our app to this S3 packet. So here we have our media configurations. I'm adding here the AWS configurations. Then with this configuration, I make the file path more user-friendly. I don't want files with the same name to get overwritten. And I want all the files to be saved in a media folder within the S3 packet. All right. And last but not least, we add the S3 storage to our storages configuration. For this, I'm adding here the S3 storage. For now, this is just for testing. Later, we will update our custom schema storage. OK, save this file. And let's redeploy the code again. OK, once this is deployed, we can upload the avatar. And great, now it works. If we inspect the image path, we can see it is stored on Amazon. We can also check it directly on the server. As you can see here, we have a media folder and the avatars folder with the image. Nice. Now we can also upload a logo for the site. So I'm going to my admin interface, to site settings, create a new site setting. I call it again branding and upload a logo. We can see the logo is now displayed on the site. And our media folder has also now a logo folder. Great! So our main application is now deployed and is using a railway subdomain. If we want to add tenants now, we need to add a custom domain so we can create and manage subdomains ourselves. My favorite domain registrar is Porkpun. And here I purchased the domain we can use as demo for this tutorial. So I copy the name and add it to my web server. And then here in settings, 
I add here this custom domain. And choose the port 8080 for G Unicorn. Here, Railway gives me information how to set up the DNS records. So I copy this value and create a CNAME record on Porkbun. I click here DNS. Then, under Type, I choose Alias, which is a CNAME at the root domain. The host I leave blank, because this is our root domain, and I paste the value in the answer field. OK, and then I click Add. And now this record was added to the domain. This is the domain for our main application. Now let's set up a subdomain wildcard for our tenants. I add a new custom domain. And this time with an asterisk dot in front. I select again the port, G Unicorn, and add domain. And then we have to add those two records. One is a C name with an asterisk as the wildcard for any subdomain, and the second with the name underscore acme challenge is required to authorize the creation of subdomains and secure them. So I copy here the value. Back to Porkpan. I change this one to CNAME. I add the asterisk for the host. And paste here the value for the answer. OK. Then click Add. And we do the same now for the second record. OK, so we have three records now. The main application, the dynamic subdomains, and the subdomains authorization. All right. And here under Details, I turn on Cloudflare DNSSEC, which adds an additional layer of security to the domains. OK, with that, our custom domain is set up. Now we just need to wait a couple of minutes until the domains are propagated across the internet and active. All right, now we got the green check mark. Nice. As next, we need to add this custom domain and subdomains to our allowed hosts. So in my settings.py file, I add those domains now to the allowed hosts. For the subdomains, we just add a dot and to the CSRF Trusted Origins. And here we're adding the asterisk. OK, save this file, and let's redeploy the code. OK, once this is deployed, we can access the website. Now our website is running on the new domain. Nice. Nice. All right, and now we are finally ready to create a tenant. So in my console, I write python manage py create underscore tenant. Then we add the schema name. As this website is all about Flickr images, I create a pets tenant. So schema name pets name pets. Now it is migrating the tables to the pet schema. Then we add the domain, pets dot, then our custom domain. All right, and with that, our new tenant is created. Now let's create an admin user for this tenant. So Python managed to pi create underscore tenant underscore super user. The tenant schema is pets. Add the credentials. And the super user is created. OK, and now let's check it out. I add the pets subdomain. 
and we have new tenant up and running. So I'm adding here some item for the most popular pets. Dogs, cats, and rabbits. Let's also log in. And upload an avatar. However, when we inspect the location of this image, it is using the same avatars folder as the main application. Let's modify our custom schema storage now, so the tenants files are saved in an isolated tenants folder. So at the moment we are still using the standard S3 storage, which ignores the tenant schemas. So let's switch back to our custom schema storage and modify the storage.py file. So I'm going to my home folder, to storage.py, so when we are in the development environment I'm using the default file system and tenant file system storage. Let's also import settings, ok, else when we are in production. So here again, if the schema name is public, I'm using the S3 storage. Let's import this class. So from storages.backends.s3 import S3 storage. Else, if we're dealing with a tenant schema, I'm returning a custom S3 tenant storage which works like the tenant file system storage but on S3 and is taken in the schema name as an argument. Ok, let's create this class now. So this class is inheriting from the S3 storage. With this init method I instantiate the superclass, which in this case is the S3 storage and retrieve the schema name. And then I overwrite the save method and define a new path where the file should be saved and is taking in the multi-tenant relative media root location to which we pass the schema name. And then slash and this is the name of the file. Ok, with this configuration our file should be saved in a tenants folder and containing a folder with the schema name. Let's save this file, redeploy the code and check it out. Ok, once it is deployed, we upload a new avatar image. And if we inspect the path now, we can see we have a tenants folder and a pets folder. And here we can see the folders on S3. Awesome! Alright, and now let's add some branding to the site. And with that we set up a new tenant and customized it. So as last feature I will add a way to create and delete a tenant easily through the admin interface. For this we add two properties to our tenant model class. So I'm going to my tenant manager folder, here to models.py. Here we have our tenant class and here I'm adding the property auto create schema and set it to true. With this a schema is automatically created when we add a new tenant but we still need to do the migration manually. We will see that in a second. And the second one is auto drop schema which deletes the schema when the tenant is deleted. Ok. Let's save this file, let's do a migration, so pythmanage.py make migrations, but as we can see no changes were detected, 
So those two properties don't require a migration, because they do not directly change the structure of the table. Ok, and now for the very last time, let's redeploy the code. Ok, once this is done, we can create a new tenant, this time through the admin interface. On my main application, I go to slash admin underscore tenants. Then to the tenants table. Here so far we have the pets tenant. Let's add a new tenant. A nature tenant. And save. Then I add the subdomain. nature dot and then the custom domain and then save. All right, with this we have created a database schema, but we still have to populate it with the tables. So let's go back to our console. And here we say python manage to py migrate underscore schemas and then the schema name, in my case nature. Ok, and now the tables are migrated to this schema. Next we create again a super user for this tenant. And the super user is created. Alright, let's check it out. I add the subdomain. And we got our new tenant. And now with some items and customization of the site. And on S3 we got a new isolated nature folder for the media files. Awesome! Alright, this is all for this video. You know now how to create tenants in Django, how to customize them and how to deploy them to a web server. Thank you so much for watching and supporting this channel. I hope to see you very soon. Until then, stay curious my friends and bye bye for now.